Right, okay, so I want to make a response video to Warrington for Europe. And it's going to be a very off-the-cuff response video. So it's going to be a little bit embryotic, but um, there you go. And the reason I'm making a video rather than just posting something back on their Facebook page is because I don't believe in communicating with these sort of people, which... They sort of see themselves as, as an angel on earth, lambasting back the darkness past the realm set by the Midgard serpent, if you know your Norse mythology. Or that they see themselves like a balancing scales, perfectly on the equilibrium position. Like they have total conviction in their um, own infallibility. Such conviction in their own infallibility that they're willing to overturn the democratic will of the people because they know better apparently. Now the argument that they've made is that we buy so many agricultural goods from the European Union therefore we should remain in the European Union. But the problem with that is that the European Union forces us to buy agricultural goods from the European Union. So it's a bit like me putting a gun to your head and saying you buy I, or I demand that you buy so many USB sticks from me and then say well you can't get out of this relationship because you buy so many USB sticks from me even though that you could get them cheaper elsewhere and that's how the European Union runs. The European Union runs by um, enforcing price ceilings and price floors. Now a price floor is a government set level that a price of a product mustn't go below, causing more to be supplied and less to be demanded. A price ceiling is a government set lay, um, is a government set level that a price of a product mustn't go above, causing more to be demanded and less to be supplied. Now, it can't just set these um, price ceilings and price floors. Um, into the European Union's countries and then say and then enforce them because what would happen is that the companies within these countries would just go out of the European Union where um, where they don't have to comply to these rules and regulations and they'd be able to get the products far much cheaper so what they do they tell the companies within the European Union what countries they can and can't import and export goods from and they also create massive tariffs onto importing goods from outside the European Union so that these goods are no longer cheaper because they've had to weigh in the fact that there's this massive tariff onto the cost of importing the goods. Now, I want to read something from Basic Economics 5th edition by Thomas Sowell, which is a brilliant book if you want to learn basic economics. And it makes this point perfectly clear and how it adds to Africa's poverty problem. None of this is particular to the United States or to India. The countries of the European Union spent $39 billion in direct subsidies in 2002 and their consumers spent twice as much as that in inflated food prices created by these agricultural programs. Meanwhile, the surplus food has been sold below cost on the world market, driving down the prices that third world farmers could get for their products. So this is the point that I made to Warrington for Europe. We might buy so many apples from the EU or with um, countries within the EU, but we're forced to do that. And that comes the, at the expense of African farmers. It comes at the expense of their agricultural programmes and also the price of their agricultural products, which they make. Now, the only way out of poverty is through work. I've been through this before. So what the European Union is doing is kicking out the bottom runs of the social mobility ladder for the Africans, keeping them impoverished and making it harder for them to rise up this social mobility ladder. Now this creates 
additional problems and the point I would like to point out or the example I would like to point out I should say is climate change the only way that we can tackle climate change is to get the third world out of poverty because we need to get the third world to the standards of caring about the environment that we are in this country because we make a very small impact relative to them so it's pretty pointless pointing the finger at us we need to somehow get them to a social mobility standard where they can actually tackle their impact and the only way that we can do that is to get them out of poverty because at the moment they currently can't do it because they're well they're impoverished and they don't have the money to do that so um, with saying that, I think I should just wrap this up really now and say now, like I said, it was an off the cuff video and um, very embryotic, but yeah, say now.